The NCAA hammer strikes again. Jim Harbaugh has been suspended from coaching college football for a whole year. Michigan responds by making him an honorary captain. Coming up. Welcome to the Point of Minute show on Michigan football at the Voice of College Football, where we average one outstanding point for every minute of video. My name is Cliff. His name is Mac. Let's get into it. Today, we've got a hot topic that's been making waves in the college football world. We've been diving into this recent news lately about Jim Harbaugh, where the NCAA has handed him a four-year show cause with a one-year suspension, but in a surprising twist. He's been named the honorary captain for Michigan's season opener against Fresno State. Mac, first off, what are your initial thoughts on Jim Harbaugh's suspension by the NCAA? Let's cover that first. Well, yeah, so my initial thought is the, I think, the same initial thought that everyone's thinking right now, because we all think our thoughts. And that thought is this. Why? Just just why? Why do this right now? They gave him a, a years-long ban and a four-year show cause, so he effectively can't coach in college football for four years, which doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't know if the NCAA has noticed this, but Harbaugh's not actually at Michigan anymore. He's he's at some team, their professional team, I think, somewhere out in Los Angeles. I believe that's in California. I'm really not sure. No one cares about this. Literally, no one cares. Jim Harbaugh might might actually care. He Jim Harbaugh might actually care about this because it's his name that's being dragged through the mud here. But frankly, Michigan doesn't care about this. The NFL obviously doesn't care about this. They're not going to do anything. And frankly, I don't think Michigan fans should care about this either. Those are my initial thoughts. I don't care. Well, okay. Now, like you're saying, nobody cares and it doesn't seem to be a big deal because I don't think Harbaugh is coming back to college football for, to coach. So what, what's the point of the suspension? Why even do it? I think if we're really honest with ourselves, no one really knows because it's like you said, Harbaugh is never coming back to college football. And I think all we can really do at this point is speculate. I mean, we can speculate that maybe it was because Jim Harbaugh pants to the NCAA with his advocacy of revenue sharing and, and NIL for athletes. Um, maybe it's because, uh, you know, the NCAA has been losing a lot of court cases lately and they kind of want to give that perception of power where there is none. Uh, maybe it's because they felt it was their moral duty to punish Jim Harbaugh for buying a recruit, the forbidden cheeseburger. We all know in Genesis when Satan was tempting Eve, it wasn't an apple. It was a cheeseburger. It was a cheeseburger. With extra, with That's biblical bacon. with extra bacon. That's biblical. That's just, that's just good theology right there. It's not. It's not at all. No. Um, I, I thought Harbaugh was already punished for that anyway. I thought that was the point of the three-game suspension back in the 2023 season. So I, I thought we were all set, but apparently not. I, according to the NCAA, the real, the real meat of the violation here was about him lying to the investigators about having provided impermissible benefits to, to, the, uh, to a recruit. Now, friendly reminder, as I've mentioned a couple of times here now, the benefit provided to the recruit was the cheeseburger. Apparently, uh, from this restaurant in Ann Arbor, which is called the Little Brown Jug, uh, apparently it's a really good restaurant. I've heard that it is a really good restaurant. I've never been there myself. I, have you ever been to the Little Brown Jug? I have not. Honestly, I guess I don't know Ann Arbor as well as I did because I had not heard of the Little Brown Jug until this whole thing happened. But I even lived in Ann Arbor and I guess I didn't see it, but I was a kid. So who knows? All right. Well, uh, there you go then. I guess apparently it's a really good restaurant and maybe we should try it sometime. But the thing of it was that investigators asked him if he bought the recruit, the cheeseburger. Um, and according to Isaiah Hole, there's some speculation that maybe Harbaugh said he couldn't remember. And then the NCAA then used that as the basis to accuse him of lying to them. Honestly, I think that's really stupid. I think all of this is really stupid. I'm at the point where like, even if he did outright lie to investigators, I would question why he felt it necessary to do so. But at the end of the day, this is still about a cheeseburger and recruiting violations that Michigan and Harbaugh had, I thought, already been punished for. So this hammer that the NCAA brought down on Harbaugh really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I also, real quick, want to give a hat tip to Crane & Company from the Daily Wire. Uh, for this point, I thought this was an interesting point. Banning coaches like Harbaugh from college football is bad for college football. I understand that you know Harbaugh is not coming back to college football in all likelihood, but banning him is still bad for college football. Why is that? Coaches that are a net positive for the sport, like Jim Harbaugh, 
Um, they also mentioned coaches like Pete Carroll. I think Jim Trussell actually got mentioned in there. Um, but uh, specifically with Pete Carroll, though, whatever happened at USC uh, after he left, I'm not as familiar with that situation that happened when I was really young. I just remember that Reggie Bush was uh, technically ineligible for the season that he won the Heisman Trophy and he had his Heisman taken away, but it's been given back now, so all was right. Um, but in terms of championship winning coaches that make college football more interesting, Harbaugh, Pete Carroll, other coaches that are beloved by their players, these coaches are a net positive for the game. And the NCAA banning them just gives more fodder to the people who believe that the NCAA is willing to sacrifice college football if it means they get to keep whatever status they think they have. How do you think this decision could impact? And this is, I, I grant you, this is a strange question. How do you think this decision could impact Michigan's relationship with the NCAA? Does it make potential upcoming punishments for Michigan in the sign stealing case worse, or do you think everything will just play out the same? Theoretically, it shouldn't impact the decision because they're two different investigations. Um, but I will say this actually does worry me a little bit about the sign stealing investigation. If the NCAA is willing to bring the hammer down on Harbaugh over a cheeseburger, then what are they going to be willing to do about Connor Stallion? Again, I'm so I've said this before, I'll say it again. I am firmly of the opinion that Michigan, one, didn't cheat, and two, what Connor Stallions attempted to do with the advanced scouting thing didn't have a measurable effect on Michigan's season. But the fact that the NCAA is willing to bring the hammer down on a guy who has no desire to return to college football is honestly slightly concerning considering we are also of the belief that the NCAA just simply has it out for Michigan. And I don't think it's just Michigan either. I think the NCAA has it out for any school that threatens the NCAA's perceived status. Um, that being said, the leaked draft of the notice of allegations kind of suggests that maybe the NCAA can't really find a ton to pin on Michigan other than some of the sanctions against coaches that are no longer there. Maybe there's a game suspension for Sharon Moore, possibly also a fine. I just wouldn't want to underestimate the NCAA's desire to bring the hammer down for no other reason than they're vindictive and they don't like looking like idiots, which is kind of how they look right now, is very much like idiots. Now, Michigan could obviously take the NCAA to court, and from what I understand, they would likely win pretty convincingly. Uh, but we've also seen Michigan shy away from things like that in an attempt to uh, to take some perceived moral high ground. So really, we're just going to have to sit and wait for this to play out. Isaiah Hole is pretty close to the situation and seems really confident that the NCAA isn't going to hammer Michigan with anything, um, that the school wouldn't fight in court and likely win. <clears throat> Even Pete Thamel, Paul Feinbaum, and other reporters are saying that a hammer just isn't likely. But either way, I think we still just have to wait and see. Given the uh, severity of the suspension on Harbaugh, given that he's probably not coming back to college football and it really doesn't make a lot of sense, why do you think Michigan then turned around and decided to name him honorary captain of the opening game with uh, Fresno State? Well, conventional logic says that it's because he won the school's first national championship since 97. But my genuine hope is that Ward Manuel is just attempting to give the NCAA a giant pulsating mid middle finger. <laughs> Since we've got that game on our minds, let me ask you about the game itself. How do you think Harbaugh's presence as an honorary captain will affect the team's performance? I don't know. I mean, Fresno State, you know, they're they're not a, exactly a pushover. Like, you know, they could they could uh, they could make it a game. It could be interesting for a little while. I still think Michigan's a far uh, the far superior team, and and you know, maybe having Harbaugh on the sidelines will be kind of like the the one last hurrah with the old coach kind of a thing. But it's also the dawn of a new era. It's the dawn of the Sharon Moore era. So you know, maybe that'll mean that the team's already got that extra spark to to prove that last year wasn't a fluke or. Um, something like that. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I don't know if Harbaugh's presence on the on the sideline is really going to give this team any more motivation than they probably already have at this point. Well, yeah, no matter what, it's going to be a spectacle. And we all know Harbaugh loves spectacles. What do you think about what we think? Leave a comment and let us know. That's going to do it for us. If you want more great analysis on college football, check out all the shows right here on The Voice of College Football, and especially Michigan football at The Voice of College Football. You can also catch Mac and I live on the Big Ten Team Rivalry Show Monday nights at 8 right here on YouTube. Mac, take us out. 
This is Michigan football at the voice of college football. Uh-huh.